Question, explain Colossians 2.16. Answer, the verse reads, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food or drink, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. End quote. That's the um, passage as it reads out of the ESV. Uh, the cr- traditional interpretation of this passage suggests a scenario. This is, I'm going to describe the, the first primary um, way of reading this passage, and then I'll describe the way I understand the passage. Um, the traditional interpretation of this passage suggests a scenario where a first century Torah teacher, I'm sorry, a first century Torah observant believer is passing judgment on a non-Torah observant believer for not keeping the Torah. However, this doesn't accord with the historical context in light of what we learned in answer six above. And what did we learn in answer six? That the Judaisms of Paul's day felt that Torah keeping didn't save them. Instead, they felt that Torah keeping was done to maintain their place already within their place already secured by Jewish ethnicity. So, in this view from chapter six, as I'm borrowing the theology of cha- of, of verse of um, question six, it is more likely that Paul understood that Gentile believers would be joining existing Jewish communities in his day, and that these Jewish communities would feel uncomfortable with the Gentiles keeping Torah as Gentiles, while at the same time claiming the promises of God through Yeshua. It is more likely, then, that the judgment being passed was not from Torah-observant believers down to non-Torah-observant believers, but was in fact the opposite. And what I mean by the opposite is that it was likely judgment was being passed from the unbelieving Jewish community to Torah observant Gentile Christians for in fact keeping Torah without going through the ritual of conversion first. Remember, first century Israel believed that Israel was a Jewish only community and they believed that by virtue of being Jewish only, there were no Gentiles who were allowed to keep Torah, at least in a covenantal man- in a covenantal manner, meaning uh, even the parts of Torah that they were attracted to before they converted were only for the purpose of, of uh, gaining them entrance into the Jewish community in the end. So in the end, we have a policy that teaches Jewish only Israel, and the only way for a Gentile to find his place permanently within the covenant, that is within their limited scope or their limited view of things, the unbelieving Jewish community imposed a proselyte conversion ceremony on the Gentiles and said, if you want to keep Torah along with us, if you want to keep the badges of identification, if you want to walk into the works of the law, you have to convert, become a Jew first, let us legally recognize your position within the community as a legally recognized Jew. Once you pass that entry point, once you cross over, then the rest of the Torah and the blessings of the covenant are handed to you, and that's since the membership packet is given to you only after you become a member, but not before. So let me finish my um, answer here. In a word, it is historically tenable that unbelieving Israel became jealous and outraged at Paul's teachings at the newly fledged Gentile inclusion into Israel via association with a slain Jewish martyr sans circumcision, that is, minus circumcision.